What's good? So the Lord gave me this message for different groups of people. The common denominator amongst them all is that they feel alone. Like they're in this season of feeling very alone. Yes, God never leaves us nor forsakes us, but naturally you feel very by yourself. And this is for different reasons. For group A, it's the people who have gone through a season of having to cut people off, having to release people. Some of them because God has shown you their true colors or they showed you all by themselves. Or you just have grown apart. You're going in different directions and you've just had to yield to, to the still small voice of God that has told you to release them. And I remember God brought me through a season where he had just had me cutting people off left and right. And I didn't see why they didn't do anything to me. But later on, I would find out why it was necessary for me to do that, right? And some of you guys have been in that very same season. Now, group B consists of people who are just physically alone. Like there's nobody around you. There's not even anybody that you can count on right now. You are literally like John in the wilderness by yourself right now. The Lord has had you in incubation and isolation. And for group C, you're a group of people who are not necessarily alone. You have people around you, but the people around you cannot perceive the direction that you're headed towards. Some of you may be dealing with attacks, family, friends, believers who are questioning your sanity, your direction, or you're in a season of going deeper with the Lord. As I've been talking about God taking us within this deeper awakening and you feel like nobody else could see what you see. You may have people around you who are like, yeah, yeah, I've been seeing that too, sis but they don't see it like how God is causing for you to see it. So as a result of that, you feel alone. All of you guys are feeling alone right now. God wanted me to share with you what somebody shared with me some years ago, and I'll never forget it. He misspoke, but Holy Spirit corrected it, which is that God will always send you assignment to help you to carry your cross. As many of us know with the story of Jesus, Jesus had to bear that cross by himself, right? He dealt with the beatings. He dealt with the betrayal of his children. He was going through it all. He went through hell. He literally went through hell on earth. And as he was on his way to the mountaintop for his physical demise, for his physical death, there was a man named Simon who helped him carry that cross. Listen, this destiny helper or destiny connection may come in the form of an intercessor to partner with you in prayer. Please do not take them for granted. Yo, honestly, thank the Lord Jesus Christ. Like, look what he did for us. I pray we never take this for granted. Listen, oftentimes this helper, this person will come in the nick of time. When you feel like your back is against the wall, you feel like you, it, you may just commit spiritual suicide, like I'm done with this whole process altogether. God will send somebody. He will send you a witness in the name of Jesus. He will send you a helper. Some of you guys need financial aid, okay? God is going to send that oftentimes, yet again, in the nick of time. Trust him. Provision will come in the nick of time. That's a message and a separate message that God wants me to release. But I'm saying that to you today. It's, it may not come how and when you expect, but when you need it. At that perfect time, God is going to send it just to prove that he is God in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. But let me tell you, sometimes that Simon will only play a temporary role in your life. Jesus bore that cross by himself. And as gruesome as the crucifixion was, it was ultimately a beautiful thing that was happening on our behalves, right? It was a promise being fulfilled. And in the end, Jesus said, it is finished. So will be the case for some of you when it comes to you and your destiny helper. You will see the fulfillment of the promise. You will see the finishing end of it without Simon necessarily being alongside you. Once processing is finished and promises are made manifest. So do not grow married to the role and position that they are playing in your life. They may only join you for a portion of your ride and they will give you grace. They will give you grace. There's something about a destiny helper where they will pursue you. They will be merciful. They'll be gracious. They could even be a little bit annoying sometimes because <laughs> your flesh may be combating against it, but they will pursue you. Okay. They will pursue you and God wants you to know that your Simon is coming in Jesus name. But please note and don't ever forget that your destiny helper, though they are your destiny helper, they are also a human being. Okay. In some way, shape or form, they will sin and, and they will fall short. 
If God has sent them, don't write them off as being sent by the devil just because they have fallen short. They are human, okay? Now, that's the first group. And as I said, there's a group of you who are entering into such deep revelation with Christ. You have received a new anointing, new wine, new wineskin, a new mantle upon your life. God reminded me of Jeremiah and Baruch. Jeremiah had been called by God to do this tough work that he knew he could even die for. And he was like, and I watched the movie. It may not have gone down like this to the T, but I'm gonna insert a clip of it. So within this clip, the Lord sends a servant to Jeremiah. He says, Jeremiah. And he asks him, what does he see on that tree? And he says that he sees that the tree is about to sprout. It's about to spring forth. Then he says, you have seen well. You have seen well, as this tree is in a hurry to sprout, so God is in a hurry to carry out his word. It is time for you to speak. Stand and tell them everything as I command. And the man says, it is time, it is time, Jeremiah. And Jeremiah at this point is like, I'm just a simple man, Lord. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. And he is running from the calling. Yet the Lord says that it's time. It is time. So he keeps running and then he asks him for a sign. How would they believe me? I don't want to do it alone. I don't want to do it alone, Father. I don't want to do it alone. Do not make me do this alone. And then he hears Jeremiah in the wilderness and he is ready to run because he's like, you know what? I, I've had just about enough of these encounters. But Baruch is like, I'm Baruch. I heard, I heard you speak. speak. I've perceived the voice of God through you. What you have said, what you have done on behalf of the Lord couldn't have been through your own strength. That had to be God helping you. you. And he says, I want to go with you wherever you go. And then obviously Jeremiah's like, yes, <laughs> finally. So yes, your Baruch is coming in Jesus' name. Baruch was able to perceive what very few people were. Jeremiah felt alone on that battlefield to do this new assignment that may come with lots of people throwing stones, but God sent help to Jeremiah, okay? For those of you who are going deeper, God is going to send you your helper. God is going to send you your witness in the name of Jesus. And when it comes to your promise, I know some of you guys thought of this to be a marriage word, but it's inclusive of that to an extent because he highlighted Abraham and Sarah. Abraham received the revelation of the promise, right? <laughs> Abraham received the promise from the Lord and he had Sarah alongside of him to endure to, and see that thing come to pass. Now there was some troubles and trials. Sarah even laughed at the idea of it. Your partner, your person may laugh at the idea of you two being together or you two walking into the fullness of what God has prophesied and perhaps revealed to one of you. But what happened was that the promise came to pass and they stuck it out. And though they sinned and fell short of the glory of God, they endured together. God is gonna send you your Abraham. God is gonna send you your Sarah who can perceive the vision, who can walk this promise out with you, who can walk towards the promise with you, whether that's for the calling upon your life or the marriage, okay? He's gonna send that person to you even though marriage is the calling. But that person is coming. That one person is coming to you in the name of Jesus. Remember, God will always send you assignment to help you carry your cross. There may be a season where it's just you and the Lord. And that's quite all right because he is more than enough for us. But there comes the point where it's not good for mankind to be alone. So be an expectation for that one person and share with me your testimony if you feel led, okay? So, so that's it. I pray that this was a blessing to you. So yeah, please do share it with somebody if you feel led. And I'll see you in the next one. Later. Bye. I kept on hearing this. Please wait. Help is on the way. <laughs> so I looked in Google and I found this and I can't even tell you why it's so prophetic for me other than the obvious. But yeah, please wait. Help is on the way. And also, thank you to those of you who have been of support to this ministry. Thank you for praying for me, subscribing, sowing seeds, all of that beautiful stuff. Please do lift me up in prayer as I'm in a transition of my own. So God bless you. Later. I love you guys. Have a good one.